The system of classification and nomenclature of plants are based on morphological and anatomical features. It is necessary for a student of systematic botany to attain the ability to recognize the characters of plant. Knowledge of plant structure and familiarity with the technical terms is important in plant taxonomy. Now start the terminologies related to plant taxonomy. Here we can see the terminologies according to plant type, especially in habit and habitat. That is annual, biennial, perennial, herb, shrub, tree, climber, liana, epiphyte, parasite, aquatic and xerophytes. Annual. Annual plants that perform their entire life cycle from seed to flower, flower to seed within a single growing season. All roots, stems and leaves of the plants die annually. Only the dormant seeds bridge the gap between one generation to another generation. For example, wheat, watermelon and maize. Next, biennial. Biennials are plants that complete their life cycle in two years. That means plants which require two years to complete their life cycle. For example, carrot, cabbage and onions. In the first year, these are germinate, develop a root, stem and leaves. Later in their second year, they yield flowers and bearing fruits, followed by the entire planter die. Next, perennials. Perennials are plants which complete their life cycle in more than two years. Once they grow, they start to bear flowers, produce fruits, seeds, and the cycle continues for a longer period of time. For example, mango, coconut, palm, and banyan, etc. Next, herb. Herbaceous plants are the plants with the green from bottom to top and soft stems. These can produce flowers and fruits in a very short period of time. Then shrub. A shrub is a small medium sized perennial woody plant. Unlike the herbaceous plants, shrubs have persistent woody stems above the ground. Shrubs can be deciduous or evergreen. They are distinguished from trees by their multiple stems and shorter height and less than 6 to 10 meter tall. Next, tree. Tree is a perennial plant with an elongated stem or trunk supporting branches and leaves in most species. Then, climber. Climbers are the plants with weak stem which climbs up other trees and any tall objects. For example, beans, cucumber and grapevine. Those plants that take support from neighboring structures. Now, lion. Lions is a long stemmed woody vine that is rooted in the soil at ground level and uses trees as well as other means of vertical support to climb up to the canopy to get access to well light areas of the forest. Woody perennial climbers found in tropical forest, for example, hiptage, cryptolipis, etc. Now, epiphytes are also called as air plant. Epiphytic plants means plants that grow upon another plant or object only for physical support. It do not have any attachment to the ground. The best known example for epiphytic plants are orchids and some mosses. Next, parasite. Parasitic plants means plants that obtained all or part of its nutrition from another plant without contributing to the benefit of the host and also causing extreme damage to the host. All parasitic plants have modified roots called hostoria which penetrate the host plant directly connecting them to the xylem and phloem. Some examples of parasitic angiosperm families include Melanophoresi, Orapangesi, Loranthesi and Cascutesi. Then aquatic plants. So aquatic plants means plants that have adapted to living in aquatic environment. They are also referred to as hydrophytes. Then, xerophytes. Xerophyte plants are adapted to life in a dry or physiologically dry habitat by means of mechanism to prevent water loss or to store available water. So far we have seen the terminologies according to habit and habitat. Next, let's see about the terminologies based on roots. The major root system of plants is classified into taproot and advantageous root. Here we discuss some specialized roots such as 
nodulated fibrous tuberous tilt epiphytic climbing and aquatic root now nodulated roots nodulated roots are beads like structure on the roots and found in plants that are associated with rhizobium rhizobium is nothing the symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria mostly found among the legume family of fabaceae next fibrous roots it is usually formed by thin moderately branching roots growing from the stem a fibrous root system is universal in monocotyledonous plants grasses uh, such as wheat rice and corn are the example of fibrous root system tuberous roots tubers are enlarged structures in some plant species it is used as storage organ for nutrients they are used for the plant's survival to provide energy and nutrient for regrowth during the next growing season example of plants with the notable tuberous roots include the carrot potato and dahlia next stilt root stilt roots are aerial adventitious root which grow downwards from basal nodes of the main stem and fix firmly to the soil these roots bear several large overlapping root caps that is called multiple root caps uh, for example sugarcane pantanus rhizophora sorghum and maize epiphytic roots epiphytic roots are the roots that grow on the surface of the other plants and derives its moisture and nutrient from the air rain water or from debris accumulated around it the best known epiphytic plant root include mosses and orchids climbing roots climbing roots are the adventitious roots that arise from the nodes or internodes in weak stem plants these roots help the plants in climbing by penetrating the cracks of the supporting portion example pothas piper and vanilla next aquatic roots aquatic roots that develop on stems above the normal position occupied by roots instead of anchoring on the soil aquatic plants attach their roots under the water or on moist soil example water lilies pistia and myriophyllum etc here it's over for terminologies based on roots now we start the terminologies based on stem the stem is the ascending organ of the plant it's developed from the plumule so according to stem there are several types are there such as aerial stem weak stem reduced stem modified stem such as filoclad thorns prickles tendrils and bulbils so now aerial stem the aerial stem means a stem with an erect or vertical growth habit above the ground level next weak stem the main types of modification of weak stem is climber twiner trailer or creepers climbers plants with weak stem in order to reach sunlight they climb some support with some special organ for example cucumber fasciflora and grapes twiners twiners are also called as the stem climber here the difference is stem of the twiners coil around themselves for support because of its slender habit example clitoria abrus trailer some weak stemmed plants just trail horizontally on the surface of the soil that is called a trailer the apical portion of the prostrate branches raised above the soil for example cynodon then creepers creepers also weak stemmed plants the creepers spread horizontally along the soil plants with grip over the surface of the soil for example lawn grass centella oxalis and portulaca reduced stem in some plants the stem is in the form of reduced small disc which is not differentiated into nodes and internodes so for bulbs are the most reduced form of stem for example allium sepa modified stem modified stems such as filoclad tendril and bulbils so filoclad means a flattened branch or stem joints resembling and functioning as a leaf in some plants such as cactuses the flattened green stems are do the function of leaf such a stem adapted for the manufacture of food is called a filoclad tendrils a tendril is a specialized stem with a thread like shape that is used by climbing plants for support in some cases leaves and petiole also modified into tendrils the example for stems modified into tendril is passiflora and 
grapes. Bulbil. A condensed axillary bud is called bulbil, a small bulb-like organ of vegetative reproduction growing in axile region of leaf. For example, Dioscoria basella agave oxalis. Next, branching in stems. With the growth of stem, it is divided into two different branches. That is lateral and dichotomous. Lateral branches. That means shoot system of plants that develops from axillary buds on the stems. This may also be called as axillary branching. Dichotomous. In dichotomous branching, the branches form as a result of an equal division of a terminal bud. That means two branches is developed from apical bud. Next, safe of the stems. According to safe of the stem, there are different types that mean cylindrical, angular and flattened. Cylindrical means straight and rounded shape of stem. Angular means stems having ridges that uh, for example scissors quadrangularis next flattened flattened means stem flat and plate like structures of shape example opensia now we see about surface of the stem based on surface of the stem it is identified as glaucous glabrous succulent hairy thorny spiny and prickly glaucous Glaucous means shining and smooth. Glaucous is used to describe the pale grey or bluish green appearance of the surface of some plant stem. The absence of the ordinary bright green colors of the stem is called as glaucous. Next, glabrous. A glabrous stem means without hair on the stem. Succulent. Succulent plants means plant parts are thick and fleshy and then cost usually to retain water in arid climates. The photosynthesis process of succulents is mainly through stems rather than the leaves. It's mainly due to absence of leaves or succulents contains very small leaves. Thorny. Thorns are developed from shoot materials. It is shooty, straight and pointed structures found in many plants such as citrus, candium, bougainvillea and durandum. Spiny. Spines are short pointed structures with our modified leaf structures on the stem surface. They give protection to the plants from herbivores. For example, in Opensia, minute leaves of the axillary bud develop into spines. Prickly. Prickles are short pointed woody outgrowths from the trunk. Prickles are formed from the plant epidermis and cortex. For example, bombox. Rose. Now, terminology is based on buds. Buds are present at the apex or axial region of the stem. According to their position, they are classified as lateral, terminal, and pseudo terminal buds. Lateral buds. It is otherwise called as axillary buds. It is an embryonic or organogenic suits located in the axial of a leaf. It may be specialized in producing either vegetative shoots or reproductive shoots. Terminal bud. A terminal bud is the primary growing point at the top of the stem of a plant. That means terminal buds occur at the apex of the stem. Next, pseudo terminal bud. It is otherwise called as false terminal buds. An axillary bud taking over the function of a terminal buds. That means if the apical end of the twig die, the axillary bud can act as a terminal bud. Next, we are discuss about the leaf terminology. Based on structure of leaves, it is classified as stipulate, extipulate, interpetiolar stipules, petiolate, sessile, simple and compound. Now, stipulate. At the base of the petiole, in many plants, Appearance of pair of lateral appendages is known as stipules. Leaves with stipules are called stipulate. Example, hibiscus. Next, extipulate. The leaves without stipules with scars are called extipulate. It means due to the leaves formerly with stipules and fallen later. Example, mango and all monocots.
interpetiolar stipules. In some plants with opposite stipulated leaves, a fusion of the two stipules present on the same side is called as interpetiolar stipules. Opposite leaves with interpetiolar stipules is a specific identification of Rubiaceae. Next, petiolate. In petiolate leaves, the leaf stalk may be long. Sessile. Sessile leaves are born directly from the stem or peduncle. Simple leaves. A simple leaf is a single leaf is never divided into smaller leaflet units. It is always attached to a twig by its stem or the petiole. Simple leaves have single leaf blade or lamina. Compound leaves. Compound leaves means leaves along with the main leaf because many leaflets are joined to the stem through petiole. It shows the complete division of the leaf blade along the mid vein. That means the blade of the compound leaf is divided into several leaflets. According to duration of leaf, there are some de terminologies are there. That is persistent, deciduous, evergreen and fugaceous. Persistent leaves. Persistent leaf means leaves falling away from very late or always present. That means remaining attached after the normal function has been completed. Deciduous. The term deciduous leaf means leaves falling off at the time of maturity. They lost their foliage in the autumn season and grow new leaves in the spring. They include oaks, maple and beeches. Evergreen An evergreen is a plant that has leaves throughout the year and are always green. Example pine, cycad, felicium decipens. Fugaceous The leaves which fall soon and alter their appearance. Example opensia. Now we see the terminologies about the various shape of the leaves. Acicular. The leaf blade is a very long, narrow and cylindrical that is needle shaped. Example, pinus species. Linear. The leaf blade is long, narrow and flat. Example, many grasses, polyanthus, tuberosa, valisneria species. Lanceolate. The shape of the leaf blade is like that of lance. So, example, bamboo oleander. Elliptical or oval leaves. The leaf has more or less the shape of an ellipse. For example, carissa vinca and gua. Ovate leaves. The leaf blade is egg-shaped. It is broader at the base than at the apex. For example, hibiscus rosa sinensis, ficus bengalensis. Oblong. The leaf blade is wide and long with the two margins running straight up. Example, Musa species. Rotten or orbicular leaves. The leaf blade is more or less circular in outline. For example, Lotus. Cardate leaves. The leaf blade is hard shaped. For example, Beetle and Sida cardifolia. Reniform leaves. The leaf blade is kidney shaped. That is, the apex of the leaf blade is rounded above with a deep notch at the base. Example, Centella asiatica. Oblique leaves. The two halves of the leaf are unequal. For example, Begonia, Melia, Asadira. Spatulate leaves. The leaf blade has a shape similar to that of a spatula. That is broad and somewhat rounded at the top and narrower at the base. For example, Drosera burmani. Sagittate leaves. The leaf blade is arrow shaped. For example, Alacasia and Sagittaria. Hostate leaves. The two lobes of a Sagittate leaves are directed outwards. For example, Hypomia typhonium. Cuneate leaves. The leaf blade is wedge shaped or narrowly triangular. For example, Pistia. Lyrate leaves. The shape of the blade is like that of lyre. That is, with a large terminal lobe and some smaller lateral lobes. For example, radis and mustard. Pedate leaves. The leaf is divided into a number of lobes 
which spread out like the claw of a bird for example caricia pedata now the botanical terms that describe that the surface of leaves glaucous leaves glaucous means covered with a gray or whitish powder or waxy coating farinose covered with a meal like powder or minute particles scurfy leaves covered with small scale like particles next visid the other is called as glutinous leaves covered with sticky or resinous secretion punctate leaves dotted with minute pits or translucent dots that means glowing dots papillate leaves it is called as papillos bearing minute pimple like protuberances tuberculate or verrugous leaves its bearing tubercles or watery protuberances rugose rugose leaves are wrinkled typical leaves of the mint family glabrous without hairs of any kind of leaf pubescence with the hairy surface there are many kind of hairiness on the leaves here we can see some types of hairiness on leaves arachnoid it means soft knotted hairs barbellate hairs with spurs at down side beard or bristly it means long stiff hairs canescent dense grayish white hairs ciliate hairs along leaf margin forming a fringe flocos means woolly hairs glandular glandular hairs means with enlarged gland at tip of the leaf hirsute hirsute means stiff hairs rough to the touch hispid hispid means stiff bristly hairs it may penetrates skin hoary covered with short fine hairs means hoary hairs lanate it means woolly or cottony hairs pilose it means sparse soft and straight hairs puberulent it means minutely pubescence scabrous scabrous means rough to touch due to short stiff hairs sericeous sericeous means abrasive fine and straight hairs stellate stellate hairs means star shaped hairs common commonly present in malvesi strigos it means sharp straight abrasive hairs tomentos densely matted soft white wool villus long and soft hairs woolly woolly means long soft and dunkled hairs similar to tomentos thank you in next part we will see about floral terminology